So we're going to move forward with these and learn to solve differential equations using Laplace transforms. So I'm going to do two examples in this video. Now we assume that you have seen the other Laplace transform videos where we talked about the transform uh, and also transforms of derivatives or that you're familiar with this a little bit already. So our first equation we're going to solve y double prime minus y equals e to the 2t second order equation and we're given two conditions here we know what y of 0 is and we know what y prime of 0 is okay so if you recall the Laplace transform of just the function y itself we called it f of t before um, so the Laplace transform of y we said was going to be some other function capital Y of s right some new function in terms of s and when we did the first derivative the Laplace transform of f prime, here it's y prime. Remember that gave us s times this function y of s minus, and here it will be y of 0. And then the Laplace transform of the second derivative, so y double prime, would be s square times y of s minus s, so remember how the pattern goes, right, times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. So we have all that information and that helps us take care of the left hand side of the equation. So now the idea is we need to look at this e to the 2t, so we would have to calculate what the Laplace transform of e to the 2t is. So now we either assume at this point that you are starting to memorize uh, Laplace transforms or that you have a table in front of you because when we get to the end of this problem we're going to have to do the inverse transform and go backwards uh, anyway once we do the algebraic part. So we'll assume that you either are able to look up or have memorized uh, at least some of these basic Laplace transforms. Okay, so if we go ahead and figure out what the Laplace transform of e to the 2t is, it turns out the Laplace transform of e to the 2t is 1 over s minus 2. We didn't just pull that out of the air. You can either work that out using the definition or just know that or look it up on a chart. So our equation here then becomes, so this y double prime, in other words, so we take the Laplace transform of that term, that will give us s square y of s minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. So that's our y double prime minus y, right? So this is y double prime minus y, and y, the Laplace transform of y, is just y of s. I'm just sort of putting these in brackets so you can see what each piece is. Equal to e to the 2t, and we already said that was going to be 1 over s minus 2. Okay, so now what we should be able to do is we should start being able to make some substitutions here using our initial conditions, which we have, and so we can go ahead and take the information that we have up here and place that in for these. So what we get, in other words, on the left-hand side here, we get s squared times y of s minus s times, and then y of 0 is 0, so this is times 0, minus y prime of 0. y prime of 0 is 1, so this would be minus 1, and then minus y of s is equal to 1 over s minus 2. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually solve for y sub, or solve for y of s. So we go ahead and we'll simplify this side here. So we get s squared times y of s minus 1 minus y of s equal to 1 over s minus 2. And we'll keep going here. And so we get y of s in two separate terms. So we'll factor it out of the common terms, which would be s squared minus 1. And then we have this minus 1 by itself. We'll go ahead and add that to 
both sides, so we'll get 1 plus 1 over s minus 2. And now I'll go ahead and get a common denominator here. So this here would be then s minus 2 plus 1 over s minus 2. So we can go ahead and say what that is. So y of s times s squared minus 1 is equal to s minus 1 over s minus 2. And then we'll just simply divide by this term that is multiplying y of s, and we'll get an expression for y of s. So we'll get y of s is equal to s minus 1 over s minus 2 times s squared minus 1. And we can simplify here if we notice that that quadratic expression will factor. So we'll get s minus 2 times s plus 1 times s minus 1. And we'll reduce both of those to 1. So we'll get y of s is then equal to 1 over s minus 2 times s plus 1. So it's at this point in time that we want to use partial fractions to continue working with this and simplify. So we would need to get a partial fraction decomposition for y of s. Okay, so if we write down what we have so far, we're going to get partial fractions here. So in other words, we have 1 over s minus 2 over s plus 1. We're going to assume everybody's okay with partial fractions. So we have linear factors here. So we'll have a over s minus 2 plus b over s plus 1. And remember, we'll multiply in whatever's missing to get a common denominator. So we would end up with 1 equal to a times s plus 1 is missing underneath a, plus b times s minus 2 is what's missing underneath b. So we could go ahead and set each factor equal to 0. And so if we let x, sorry, if we let s equal to negative 1, then that will give us 1 is equal to a times 0 plus b times negative 3. And if we let s equal to 2, then that will give us 1 is equal to a times 3 plus b times 0. Okay, so for from those expressions there, we get that a is equal to one-third and b is equal to negative one-third if we solve both of those equations uh, for a and b. Okay, so if we go ahead and use this information then and we plug it in here, then that tells us y of s is going to equal one-third over s minus two minus one-third over s plus one. Another way you could say this is that this is actually one-third times, I guess, one over s minus two minus one over s plus one might be another way to say that. Okay, so now it has come to the point where we do the inverse transform. So you either want to know those or get out your chart for that. So the idea is that whatever our y of t is, our original solution for y, that's what we solve for, is actually going to be the inverse Laplace transform of whatever y of s is. So we're going backwards now. We're doing the inverse transform. Usually when we take the transform of y, we get capital Y of s. If we take the inverse transform of y of s, we get the original function y of t. Okay, so in other words, the inverse transform of y of s would be the inverse transform of our expression here, one-third times the quantity one over s minus two minus one over s plus one. So we're taking the inverse transform of that. 
So we have that constant multiple of one-third, which we can go ahead and bump out according to our transform rules there. So in other words, y of t would equal one-third times the inverse transform of the stuff here, right? 1 over s minus 2 minus 1 over s plus 1. Okay, if you look in your formula chart or if you know these, then these are both going to be dealing with exponentials here. So we have 1 third, and then the first one here, because it's 1 over s minus 2, that's actually e to the 2t, according to your chart probably. And then we have minus, and because this is plus 1, we use the opposite sign, so that's actually e to the minus t there. Okay, and so that is our solution, y of t equals 1 third, or you could distribute the 1 third if you would prefer there. All right, and we'll look at one other one. Here we'll do a first order equation. So here, instead of y primes, we have x primes. So x is a function of t here. So we have the first derivative of x plus 4x equals cosine t, and we have our initial condition x of 0 equal to 0. So we'll look at our Laplace transform. So our Laplace transform of x, or x of t, is just going to be big x of s. And our Laplace transform of x prime, or x prime of t, according to our formula, is going to be s times x of s minus x of 0. And Laplace transform for the right side, we'll need the Laplace transform of cosine of t. So we can work that out using the integral definition or start to memorize some patterns if you've already worked with these several times. And so we'll get that the Laplace transform of cosine t is going to be s over s squared plus 1. All right, and so now we'll put in all of our Laplace transforms for each term. So Laplace transform for x prime is x times x of s minus x of 0 plus 4x, so plus 4x of s. That's the left side, equal to the Laplace transform of cosine t, which is s over s squared plus 1. And now if x of 0 equals 0, then that means this term here is 0. So that will give us, on the left-hand side, x of s times the quantity s plus 4 equal to still s over s squared plus 1 on the right-hand side. Okay, so if we solve then for x of s and divide by s plus 4, then that will give us x of s is equal to s over s plus 4 times s squared plus 1. And so for this expression here, now we will do the partial fraction decomposition for that. Okay, so if we're doing partial fractions for this, so we have a linear term, so that would be a over s plus 4 the second term is a quadratic factor that's not reducible. So here we will set up b s plus c over s squared plus 1. So we need a linear factor, a linear idea over the quadratic factor. So getting common denominator then, that will be s equal to a times s squared plus 1 plus b s plus c times s plus 4. So we could at least use negative 4 to make this factor equal to 0, so let's do that. So if s is equal to negative 4, then that will give negative 4 is equal to 17a plus, and all of this would become nothing over there. So a would equal negative 4 over 17. And then we can't make this factor 0, so we'd have to compare coefficients, so we'll distribute on both sides. So s equal to a s squared plus a plus b s squared 
plus 4BS, there's a joke in there somewhere, plus CS plus 4C. All right, and so comparing coefficients. So if you think about, remember what we do here. So we have 0S squares plus 1S plus 0 on the left-hand side is really what we have. Over here we have A plus B S squareds if we combine the like terms. And then for the B terms we have, or the S terms, we have 4B plus C S terms. And then we have plus, and we have A plus 4C for the constant term. So we just compare coefficients, giving us A plus B is 0, giving us 4B plus C is equal to 1, and A plus 4C is equal to 0 if we compare coefficients. Okay, so now from here, it looks like since we already know A is negative 4 17 if we use this one, we will get that b is equal to positive 4 over 17, and then if we use either one of these, I think we should get that c is equal to 1 over 17. So we'll take that, that, and that, and put it in here. Okay, and so now this gives us our partial fraction decomposition, so x of s is equal to uh, a over s plus 4 plus bs plus c over s squared plus 1. And so now we just simply need to rearrange these in terms of Laplace transforms so that we get our s's or our k's or however we have them memorized or in our uh, chart if we're going off of a chart for the inverse Laplace transform. So I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments here. And I am going to go ahead and pull out the negative 4 over 17. So I'm going to make this negative 4 over 17 times 1 over s plus 4 plus and then I'm actually going to split this second fraction so I'm going to make this 4 over 17 times s over s squared plus 1 and then I'm going to write plus 1 over 17 times 1 over s squared plus 1 so now these should all fit nicely uh, if we're familiar with or have a chart in front of us for uh, particular inverse Laplace transforms. So going off this 1 over s plus 4 term, and when we take the inverse Laplace transform of everything, so this will give us x or x of t if you prefer to write. So this would be negative 4 over 17, and that 1 over s plus 4, we have that linear factor with a plus 4, so that's going to give us e to the, remember it's opposite what we see, so minus 4t here. And then for the next term, so I'm going to get plus 4 17 and s over s squared plus 1, that might be looking pretty familiar to you, because that appeared early in the problem. That was actually exactly the Laplace transform for cosine of t. And then we also have plus 1 17 and now 1 over s squared plus 1. A little bit different, but very similar. Uh, that is actually the Laplace transform for sine of t. So here, just either using our knowledge of Laplace transform or going off of a chart and working backwards, we took the inverse Laplace transforms of all three of these terms and arrive back at our solution x of t equals negative 4 17 e to the minus 4 t, 4 17 cosine t, and 1 17 sine t. Okay, so these are two examples. We did a first order equation and a second order equation. Again, uh, you know, the same thing is going to apply to higher order. Uh, your partial fraction decomposition may be a bit more complicated if you're working with uh, a significant number of factors, but that's the idea, and certainly you can take this, I guess, as far as you needed to in order to do these.